Maybe we should just begin now. Okay. Okay. So, wait. I think I want to greet them. Okay. Via this thing. That's so. cool. <laughs> you can do whatever you want because you can cut it up, right? Yeah. I don't know how. Oh. But I'll figure it out. Okay. Okay. Hello, everybody. <laughs> nice to see you. You all know me. I'm Liana. This is my friend Allison. She's a founder of Bike Saviors Bicycle Co-op. I'm going to ask you some questions. Starting now. <laughs> so, Allison, tell me about Bike Saviors. Okay. How did um, it begin? So, Bike Saviors started in my backyard three and a half years ago. Yeah. Um, we had a wrench and a couple bikes, and it was uh, me and three other people uh, taking apart bikes, not putting them back together, and pretending that we had a bike shop. <laughs> And so basically what happened was that people found out that we wanted to do a, um, like a community bike shop and a workshop where we would teach people how to, how to fix their own bikes and how to build bikes from scratch. Um, and eventually people just started showing up until, and giving us donations of old parts until eventually about six months down the road, we actually got some volunteers who knew how to work on bikes. Cool. Um, so they taught us how to do it. So nice. None of us really knew what we were doing when we started. <laughs> now we're all really excellent mechanics. Of course, of course. Um, but almost everyone, even the people who showed up and taught us how to work on bikes, were mostly self-taught too. We had like two people who worked in pro shops, um, mm -hmm. and everyone else was self-taught. So that was how we sort of got started actually doing mechanics. Um, and then a year and a half ago, we moved into a warehouse um, on the University in Roosevelt, and that is where our shop is now. Cool. So. Um, could you tell me about the organizational structure? Um, I understand it's a consensus-based collective, yes. um, which is a term some of us might not understand what that means. So could you tell us what that is and why you chose to run Bike Service that way? Sure. So, um, so when you use consensus, you have a group of people who have to agree on something before you make a decision on it. Um, nobody is in, in charge of the decision. Everyone kind of works together until you reach an agreement. Um, and the collective basis of the, of the um, business is that we all run it together with, with no hierarchy. So there's no president and vice president and director or whatever um, positions you want to call them. Um, we have rotating uh, positions, rotating officers at our meetings, um, okay. but no permanent positions. And then when, when someone wants to do something, they just bring it before the collective and we either yay or nay or modify their proposal and then they can just move forward with it. Wow. Um, so that's that's like a really general outline of how it works. Um, the officers that we have are a facilitator, a note taker, and what we call a tangent police. Mm -hmm. So at each meeting we decide um, who is gonna hold the offices for that meeting. And at the end of the meeting, um, you aren't that position. Oh, okay. So it's temporary and, and rotating. So everybody kind of learns how to be a facilitator, learns how to be a note taker, learns how to be the tangent police, which is the person who keeps um, our conversations on track and sort of calls it out for getting off topic. Uh -huh. um, does that answer the question? Yeah. <laughs> so why why did you decide to run it that way as opposed to traditional like with an executive director? Oh, right. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so. <laughs> so it actually was um, a director-based nonprofit at the beginning, at, at the birth mm. of the, the co-op. Um, I was the director, and we had a transitional structure. So the idea was to start with the director, and then transition into not having any hierarchy at all. So about a year after the co-op started, um, I stepped down from the director position, and I've just been appointed ever since then. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really, it's so much better, like, I don't know if it's time to talk about this part yeah. yet, but I will tell you that it's so much better to not have people feeling as though they automatically have to look to someone else for an answer. When you take mm -hmm. a, a leader away, people start figuring out their own solutions and learning how to do things on their own, which is kind of the whole idea of the co-op, is to empower mm -hmm. people to be in charge of their own transportation. Mm -hmm. So why should that theory not go all the way? why should that not permeate the whole organization and, mm -hmm. and be about making your own decisions and being in charge of what you're doing all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not to say that we don't have rules, because we do. We have a lot of rules, but we agree on the rules together, and then we hold each other accountable if we break our own rules. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if we wanted to have everyone wear, you know, purple tie on Tuesday, <laughs> we could do that. <laughs> um, 
However, we try not to make decisions that aren't in line with our mission statement. So our mission statement being to teach people how to fix, uh, build, and maintain bicycles. Mm -hmm. And also to um, repurpose uh, materials that would otherwise be trash. Mm -hmm. So um, we're not going to make any decisions about wearing purple ties because that doesn't really have anything to do with our mission. Mm -hmm. Um, One sort of peripheral part of our mission that has that becomes more integral at times and depending on the program is to maintain an anti-racist, anti-sexist, anti-homophobic space. Mm-hmm. Um, what we call a safe space. So um, sometimes we make policies and rules that that align with that part of the mission statement. Other mm-hmm. times we have meetings where we only talk about you know, the recycling part of our mission. Sometimes mm-hmm. we only talk about teaching. But whatever it is, like we try to just make decisions that support our mission statement and to mm-hmm. constantly reinforce what that is. Mm-hmm. So really, having any other structure would not work with our mission statement because it wouldn't be giving, it wouldn't be empowering. Yeah. Um. And frankly, like going to a job where you have a boss and you're in charge of other people is not really empowering for anybody. Mm-hmm. Um. When you get down to, to the core of it, um, <laughs> ma- maybe things get done a little bit faster. Maybe I don't mm-hmm. even totally buy that theory. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it's pretty devastating. Like to a society yeah. to do things that way. So that's why we do things differently at our shop. Cool. That's a great lead in to my next question, which is what are some of the benefits and drawbacks of um, running the nonprofit through consensus based decision making? Like one of the drawbacks actually is that it can be really hard to get people to understand what it means to be in control of their own actions. Mm. And so a lot of times when people are unfamiliar with our structure, they'll try to make other people in charge based on usually seniority. Mm. Um, which, you know, when you have seniority, you do know how to do certain things better, but um, just through, through, you know, repetition and practice. Mm. But, um, and obviously people have skills that they're good at naturally. Um, but it can be, sometimes it can be hard to get people to like come out of their shell and like take ownership. Um, which is really what started happening when I stepped down from being the director, is that mm-hmm. everybody else kind of like, like stepped up and started feeling more ownership over the cause and being like, oh, well, no one else is in charge, so why shouldn't I be in charge today? Mm-hmm. And like really just doing things on their own and getting a lot of things done. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's like sort of a combination benefit and job yeah. idea. Um, one of the things that it is, it can be really hard sometimes to make decisions at meetings if we're like torn down the middle because we don't vote. That's part of using consensus so that there's no voting. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just kind of talk through everything until everyone either agrees or abstains. Mm. Um, and then you can also block consensus, which is basically, I will not be a collective member anymore if ev- if everyone else wants to do this. Like I am, okay. I am firmly blocking this uh-huh. and, and it can't happen. Um, so that hardly ever happens. Hardly ever. Usually we can reach some kind of compromise through like conversation and through having a good facilitator at mm-hmm. that meeting who can who can sum things up and say, Okay, this is what I'm hearing over here, this is what I'm hearing over there and maybe even suggest a compromise. Like mm-hmm. it's sort of your job as a facilitator to be neutral mm-hmm. um, while still also being able to present your opinion. Mm-hmm. So it is a hard role, but when you rotate it then everybody gets better at it. Yeah. And then when they're not the facilitator at the next meeting they understand what the facilitators going through so mm-hmm. it just helps everyone work together better it's not like when you're at a meeting and there's the boss and afterwards everyone's like boss because then at the next meeting you might be the boss yeah. so you're not gonna you're not gonna like talk trash as much yeah um do you have any other great things to say <laughs> <Lots> about <laughs> consensus based decision making in the nonprofit um, sector for all of us I mean little hours yeah, sure. Um, you can do this. You can do this anywhere. Like you don't have to start a new group to be able to work this way. Mm-hmm. Um, you can bring this into your current workplace. Um, you can you can modify it. N- nobody at Bike Saviors had ever been part of a consensus based decision making group before. Mm-hmm. So we tailor made it for our shop. Mm-hmm. We don't do it the same way that other places do it, mm-hmm. and that's fine. Um, there are lots of lots of um, books and extra reading, um, I'll have to give you something from the shop okay. at some point that maybe you can share with the group. Yeah, um, I'll do it. 